welcome everyone. I, today we have a great interview. Um, I'm really excited. This is my second interview on this channel. I'm really too excited to announce Brian. Brian is the founder of Book Ad. And uh, yeah, I'm really curious what, what Brian can share with us about uh, getting successful books. But uh, before I do too much talking, I want uh, Brian to introduce himself and to tell him a little bit about his service and about his background. Well, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, excited to be here. My name is Brian, and I founded an agency in 2015 or 2016, can't remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> essentially, we do Amazon ads, BookBub ads, and Facebook ads, paid advertising for authors, only for authors. Uh, we focus on Amazon. Um, that, that's our main strong point. And we also do a few launches here and there, a few promotions here and there, help, helping authors. But our main focus is, uh, is paid advertising. Um, I founded this agency, like I said, back in 2016, because I saw there was a need for uh, basically done for you service for authors, because at the time, Amazon was opening their advertising platform to authors for the first time. And so I had been experimenting with these ads for quite a bit. And so I was I was seeing good success and I decided to offer it for, for authors. So um, yeah, that's, great. Yeah. Yeah. And where did you get your experience? Did you do product uh, ads for physical products or anywhere yeah. else? No, I essentially, um, I started with uh, with the world of self-publishing in 2013 or 14. Um, wow. Because I was uh, in academia. I was, uh, I was working in a library and archive. And essentially, I, you know, lots of, lots of reasons, but I had to <laughs> re-pivot my job. And yeah. I discovered self-publishing. And so I took a course back then, I think, was one of the first courses. Um, I published a oh, couple. Stephen James. No, Stephen it was James, um, Mastery, another one. No, um, self publishing school. Uh, okay. Back then, I don't know yeah. That's no. And that's so, really long. Yeah, really yeah. long time. Um, I published a few books with a pen name, obviously, because I wanted to test yeah. and see how things yeah. were going. And then I had, you know, I started doing this for other authors. I, I really took an interest in the marketing side of things. And mm -hmm. so I started reading very few blogs that were back then. And I started doing a few experiments. And then when the ads came about, I was, you know, I was pretty interested in it. And so I started doing them. And I had a couple of friends that were in the same space say, could you give us a hand? And that's that's essentially how it started. And we've oh, been cool. doing it since yeah. then. Um, then we expanded to BookBub and Facebook as well. But the Amazon ads has always been the core of our business. The core, the core uh, value. Yeah, cool, yeah. cool. And um, yeah, let me check. I had written some questions for you. Yeah, what I always notice is that people join my group, eh, they're all mostly non-fiction authors. Yeah. I think 95% uh, are non-fiction authors and 5% are fiction authors. The biggest question is um, how to market your book or how to promote your book, so how to get more book sales. Um, and you probably, eh, you solved that problem for yourself. Yeah. So what kind of tips can you share with them well, the best, the best tip is always think about the book first. So there's no advertising, there's no promotion ever in the world that's going to be successful if the book is not, doesn't have the fundamentals uh, in place. I call them the fundamentals, which are essentially a great cover, reviews, a great book description or blurb. This is the bare minimum because for self-publishing these days we are at a point where people don't recognize and they shouldn't recognize self-published yeah. books from traditionally published books and so we are at a point where if you want a book to be successful or even competitive it needs to be as good as the traditional publishers so yeah. if you have that in place and that should be there before you start any type of promotion um the best thing is trying to give it a bit of a boost via, I've seen anyways, via mm -hmm. promotion sites or things like that. Because Amazon ads, starting Amazon ads 
write you know as soon as you publish is not yeah. very advisable these days you but okay. much better off doing a few promotions and then mm -hmm. starting the amazon ads and the reason behind that is because essentially when you start an amazon ad when you start campaigns the algorithm doesn't really trust you because they don't know whether or not this book is going to sell or because Amazon cares for sales, obviously. So yeah, if yeah. they see it, for example, if book A isn't selling and I start Amazon ads and book B is already selling a little bit and I start the Amazon ads, the algorithm is going to naturally go towards book B okay. because the way the ads work these days is rather than something that starts the, the fire, <laughs> It's something yeah. that amplifies the fire that is already there, if oh. you see what I mean. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, that's a yeah, nice and, view. And the reason why uh, a lot of people, you know, they can't get the ads to work is because, in my opinion, at least in my experience, is they mm -hmm. start them too soon. And so okay. they publish and then they say, okay, let's run a bunch of Amazon ads and let's get this to a bestseller. These days, it's not easy to do that. That no. you know that approach. It used to be like this a few years ago, but now, yeah, not so easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally get it. I think the fundamentals you mentioned are also really important, and a lot of beginning self-publishers um, are looking for sometimes shortcuts, and they're yeah. skipping those fundamentals and are looking to solve the problem just by promoting and just by advertising. But I think you're totally right, totally agree. Your fundamentals have to be in place. Otherwise, yeah, a bad yeah, book um, will never become a bestseller, so to say. Yeah, yeah and, and also, even though you might find a way of getting a few sales here and there, it's not mm -hmm. worth it in the long run. Like a few years ago, we, you know, everyone was doing this. We had a, a tactic or strategy yeah. where we essentially used to run a lot and lot, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, of ads with hundreds and hundreds of keywords. Now, yeah. back then it used to work and sometimes it does work now as well. But what you get there is you're essentially diluting the relevancy of your book too much. And so even though you might be getting a few sales here and there, in the long run, which is what you always need to think about, it's not worth it because it's not going to be sustainable. The book, you know, okay. when, a, when the algorithm sees an advertising that is relevant to a book that is well made, and like we said, they are going to prioritize that one and not yours if you don't do things, uh, keeping in mind relevancy and the fundamentals, as, as I said. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, because I remember a few years ago, I was also guilty um, about that. Yeah, eh? we my did that yeah. For some books, my fundamentals were okay, yeah, or were good. And then I thought, okay, now let's run massive ads, keyword ads, um, book category ads, all the things. And then I be, one of the books became a bestseller just by pushing hard on yeah. the Amazon ads. So yeah. back then it works. And really interesting that now you need to do more. And yeah, other... it's um, they they've yeah. always been a bit um, paranoid <laughs> with and and rightly so with relevancy. So <laughs> even though I might have, you know, the, the the ads work on a bid basis. So the highest bidder used to win. So even if I had a book on gardening, for example, and I bid on the word Harry Potter for example, mm -hmm. and I bid $15, which is the highest ever, mm -hmm. you know, possible. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, I used to show up as Harry Potter, you know, on the Harry Potter. Okay. Yeah. Now it's impossible because impossible. the algorithm has been fine-tuned to care about relevancy. So the, if the yeah, keyword is relevant, relevant, if the target is relevant, then you bid high and then you get the placement. Otherwise, it's useless. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really interesting. Yeah. Really good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I agree. So, yeah, I think we covered already a lot. Eh? So you introduced a little bit about your background. What do you do and how you became an expert in it? And um, yeah, the next big question, because I know you do both for fiction authors a lot and you have uh, also nonfiction clients with yeah. uh, quite some success. Um, what do you think is a big difference in approach to become a successful fiction author and a successful non-fiction author. Yeah, I think in terms of the approach by the author, it always has to be 
this is not going to solve all of my all of my problems immediately so you have okay. to think about it in in the long run also and because whole, things yeah. you know details change all the time but the overarching sort of yeah you know, fundamentals the, like you yeah, know call exactly us, yeah. or or even the, the philosophy behind amazon's algorithm is always going to be the same essentially they want to sell books first of all and they want the customers to see relevant books so you again you need to think about the long run and one of the things yeah. that recently changed was the um, the category structure on amazon and these things might cause you know a lot of problems you know at that moment because people are yeah. having but if you think about it what they were what they were doing and what they did is going towards a place of more relevancy so yeah in, you, you, they are essentially cutting the number of categories you can be into so that you're more relevant. So yeah. it's always going to go towards that kind of goal. So if you have that goal in mind, it's always going to be yeah. beneficial. Another thing yeah. is try to, the, the most successful nonfiction authors that we have and that we've had in the past Mm -hmm. They were working with us, meaning they were doing something as well. <laughs> Even okay, though our, yeah, yeah. Surfi yeah, our yeah. service is done for you, yes, we take care of the ads, but you need to be promoting the books yourself a bit anyways. So yeah. I'm not saying, you know, like spam a million Facebook groups. I am saying, <laughs> you know, keep the momentum going as much as you can yeah. because that is going to benefit you and it's going to benefit the ads as well. For I mean, I have a client, for example, Mm -hmm. In uh, he writes books in the marriage dating kind of, uh, and that's actually his job. Um, he's okay. a counselor or of some sort, relationship and, counselor, or yeah, something, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, I do the ads and they do well, and he also promote. He's always on podcasts. He's you know okay, yeah, writing a few guest blog posts and things like that because the visibility has to always be there a little bit. And yeah. whenever we start the campaigns, we immediately know if this is going to be, I mean, it takes a little bit of time, but we can sort of tell if this is going to be a success or not, because what happens is the campaigns start running immediately. They start getting impressions, they start getting clicks, and that tells me the book has momentum of its own. And so it's going to be quicker to get to a point where the ads are, are working well. Some, are, I mean, yeah. it, it's possible to get there, but in some cases it takes a very long time because the book isn't selling. And so, you know, you keep on running ads, but they're not getting impressions, they're not getting clicks. And so yeah. it's a long and uh, frustrating process. So yeah. <laughs> in yeah. terms of, you know, from an author's point of view, quality always um, in the product, but also don't forget to always promote the books because they will yeah. drop if you don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you Emma, yeah, you because what I learned back in the day was Amazon looks at the number of sales because Amazon's goal is to have the maximum number of sales and have happy clients. Yeah. So if your BSR uh, is rising even without your ads, Amazon thinks, okay, there's something good going on. So if you uh, also put on ads, then it will obviously help each other. Yeah. Yeah, and that's also a reason why some clients have amazon ads running mm -hmm. you know they they have us running for them and then they do facebook ads on their own and so okay. sometimes they say well i started facebook ads and my amazon ads are doing better now how is that possible <laughs> that's possible because obviously facebook ads are driving a few sales and yeah. the amazon ads on the other hand are waking up again because they're seeing sales coming in and so yeah yeah I also something a little bit remote related to this. I saw some posts in the Facebook groups from other people, from other publishers, who said, um, I published a book a year ago and suddenly it picked up and now it's becoming a bestseller. Do you see that a lot or not? Uh, sometimes anything can happen without you, sometimes without you even knowing. Um, yeah. <laughs> if if yeah, somebody yeah. yeah if somebody mentions your book in a podcast or something and people go and buy it, you know, like I don't know, twenty sales in in the space yeah. of a day, 
then yeah. the algorithm is going to wake up because they're going to say, oh my God, what's happening? This is selling. Yeah. The problem with that is it's difficult to sustain because if the mm -hmm. book drops immediately, the algorithm is going to say, you know, this was just a, a spike, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. The good thing is sustaining sales and also, if possible, sustaining continuous sales. I don't mean like 100 copies a day because that's really hard. But even if it's two yeah. or three sales, it still gives a beneficial, it's still beneficial to the ads and to the promotion. Yeah. You know, much more than if the book wasn't selling or even if it sells like 50 copies a day and nothing for the rest of the month. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you say consistent sales is also more important than just one spike and then drop, then Amazon yeah, ads will also not work anymore. Yeah. yeah. Because the spike is, is, is good. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a nice, boost. it's a nice thing yeah. at the moment, but then if you can't sustain it, it can hurt you mm. as much as it, can help you because oh, yeah, yeah. if it drops like a stone then amazon's not going to be happy because they're going to say oh. well this book isn't you know that was just a spike it's not selling it's not you know anything yeah. and so oh. it's um that that's why back in the day i used to recommend amazon ads for launches these mm -hmm. days i recommend amazon ads at the end of launches because that's usually oh. when the moment where the uh, the book is selling the most usually yeah. at the end of yeah. a launch is usually the uh, the highest peak and so if you can start the ads and have them work at that moment you minimize the fall and you keep hopefully uh, a steady stream of sales yeah yeah makes sense yeah hopefully. makes sense <laughs> yeah and you also help people with launches i understood yeah, yeah, right i do I do some some people, I, I do help them with launches. I have a very, very sort of lean approach to launches. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I mean, launches are different and everyone who does them has, has a different tactic or strategy. I don't really recommend doing a, like a months and months in advance of preparation and things like that, at least for what I've seen and what has mm -hmm. worked for me. I still think that email, both yours yeah. and promotion sites, beats yeah. anything else all the time. So okay, email I is the... Yeah, I concentrate 99% of my efforts on email and then a cool. few paid advertising. But yeah. I don't... I mean, yes, you can do things like, you know, be a guest on a podcast, tell your Facebook group and things like that, but then it's never going to be as effective as email so that's an email wow yeah just as an example i helped launch a client's book two months ago mm -hmm. it was fiction but just just for perspective and he was in a very very it was a new author first book um very very competitive niche uh, which was post-apocalyptic thrillers you know type okay. of, that <laughs> yeah. type of thing um, yeah. which had a huge, huge popularity after COVID and things like that. But now they, they drop in a post ecoleptic, yeah, after yeah. COVID, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so we spent around six hundred dollars in promotions. Mm -hmm. And he got as a new author, he got to around one point five thousand overall in the Kindle store, like on in the whole Kindle store, wow. which was wow. incredible. He sold like yeah. 200 copies one day and things like that. The problem See, there yeah. was, so the one lesson there is if you focus on the right things, it doesn't cost that much because no. I mean, $600 for that kind of return is, is, you know, anytime. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, what kind of monetary return do we have to think of for the people who, yeah. I'm not really familiar with the Kindle store and fiction. Policy. So for fiction, it's very different because fiction makes money on series. And so it's oh, very, very hard to read. make money. Yeah. yeah. So nonfiction, on the other hand, is better because it, it gives you more um, monetary return in, you know, in the short run and also from the book itself rather than uh rather than not uh, than fiction yeah he made i think i think he broke even which doesn't sound like much but you need to remember that when you get to a point where you're that high in the store 
you know, it's good days <laughs> because the yeah. the algorithm sees that and you get a lot of love from from Amazon and everything is, yeah. is easier, the ads and everything else. At the yeah. same time, it's not easy to sustain that because obviously, you know, there is a drop. You can't always be that that level. Um, but it's just to say it's it is possible to launch very high and it is possible to to do things like that. With nonfiction, I always before I accept a client, I always want to know what their uh, goal is. Do they want to make money from the royalties alone or do they have another way of making money or do they even yeah, want to make money? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Because some people say, you know, I just want to, I just want to publish this book and that's it. So we're not talking mm. about them. If we want to make money, then it's difficult to make money from the royalties alone unless you have a very big platform, unless you're, you know, maybe even a celebrity and things like that. Yeah. The the real money is made when you sell something to the reader. And so you need to have a good way of understanding how many people go from being a reader to being a client of yours. Clients, or, yeah. Paid clients on the back end. Yeah. 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 Or maybe yeah. they buy a course or they do, you know, coaching or whatever. Because yeah. at that point, you know that one customer or one reader is really worth, I don't know, $60 for you rather than they are worth 70 yeah. cents. If, if 70 cents or yeah. $2 for a yeah. paperback book. Yeah. And that's important because at that point, you can be more aggressive with the ads, for example. Exactly. Because yeah. if I have to break even with 70 cents, I can pretty much do nothing. No. <laughs> um, if I know that, you know, out of 10, 10 people, three become my clients and each one is, is worth $60, then, yeah. you know, you can or be six, more aggressive. Or $1,000 most yeah. of the time. Uh, even even better. Coaching clients. Yeah. yeah, even better. The problem there is, well, it's not a problem, but some people decide that they want to put the book up for free. So if you look at some of the dashboards in, in my clients, they look horrendous. Mm -hmm. But at that, because the book isn't making any money, but they are making no. money on the back yeah. end. Yeah, 10 times more at the back end. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think this is really interesting because in nonfiction, um, I also always have, with a lot of my clients, I also have coaching clients, they, um, they always advise to look for a niche. It also has some back end possibilities. Yeah. And not with all, all clients, of course. Now I have a really cool client who is. Yeah, somehow always number one in his niche, but he always in little um, in smaller niches and he doesn't have really back-end option product. But I had one four weeks ago and he also had um, yeah tried everything. He had a book. He was number one in France for his niche. Um, but yeah, he didn't make a lot of money because the, the niche wasn't that big. And he had a course on the back-end, et cetera, et cetera. He said, yeah, how can I make more money? I thought, well... I see, do I still see an option for you, and that's by uh, entering the recurring revenue, so yeah. uh, membership site uh, to a school and things like that. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, the... then you can invest. You know, each client is worth I don't know ninety seven dollars a month. Yeah. So I can spend yeah easily ten dollars to acquire a client. I think is if if the niche is very very small. You can only have sort of good hopes if you're the only person on there. Yeah. Because I I had a client once who had a book about it, it was a very, very, very niche subject. And his book was was priced at I think forty dollars, like paperback. Okay. Uh, hardback yeah. even. And so hi Robbie. I know Robbie. Um <laughs> and so no Essentially, I was very, very skeptical because I said, you know, this is this is going to be awful. Nobody's going to buy. But it actually went well because it was the only book there and people wanted that information. And so yeah. the people were used to paying that much for that type of book. And so it's never like black or white. You need to always no. look at the situation. But yes, of course, if you are, you know, in a very popular, but at the same time crowded niche, then it's not easy. You win with no. volume essentially, and you win with, yeah. uh, with quality and things again, same, same as we yeah. said before, yeah. products that's, that stand out essentially. Yeah. 
Cool. And now I now we're going a little bit back to your story because mm-hmm. I remember I got a question from someone who asked. I had, I know it's not a black and white answer, but I got a question. Um, how many reviews should I have to start my Amazon ads? Yeah. So reviews are very important because with Amazon ads, they're one of the only elements of the ad itself. Um, for those who haven't run Amazon ads, essentially you don't do anything in terms of graphics. It essentially, well, you have parts of some types of ads, but essentially the simplest ones are just a copy of your cover that is shrunken down to thumbnail size, the price, the title, and the reviews. And so if you are standing, if your ad <clears throat> is standing next to five other ads and all the other ads have got, you know, the stars, then the number of reviews, then, and yours hasn't, then it makes a difference because even if you think of your own buying experience, whenever you buy something on Amazon, you always look at the reviews. And yeah. so they are very important. I don't think there's a set number, essentially. I always recommend 10, 15 to start with. And that's, again, it's not a, um, a law. It's not written in stone, but I think it's no. more like a psychological trigger than if you see as something has two digit reviews yeah. like 15 for <laughs> exactly. example yeah i don't know it's some it's a bit psychologically a bit a bit better um in terms of of quality obviously i mean you have to have quality reviews because that always plays a part in the graphic as well um the thing is with these ads there's so less um, so the attention span of the reader is so short that mm-hmm. you need to have things there immediately to catch their attention in, you know, a, a millisecond or whatever that yeah. is. And so yeah, that's why yeah. the reviews are important because we need to optimize all of the elements that we're given because we can't do anything else. We can't create a, you know, a video or something like that, unless in some types of, of ads. Yeah, unless, yeah, totally agree. I totally agree. There isn't really set in stone. Okay, you have to have this number or this number. Yeah. Depends on some factors, but I agree. At least two digits before you even think about running ads. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah it's and it's not easy. Things. It's not no. easy. I I work with some clients who are very established and even they mm-hmm. find very, very hard to get reviews. Um, some people were saying the other day, I was talking to someone and he said his ratio is one review per a hundred sales yeah. which is very discouraging it's not always <laughs> yeah. like, it's not always like that but you know you really need to push people to the review and pushing in a legal way obviously pushing in, yeah, yeah, in an ethical course, yeah. way um yeah. and you know even like publishing you know putting a link in your book that takes you immediately to the page where they can leave a review is removing a bit of friction that they might yeah. not want to, you know, it's always making it as easy as possible for them, but it's yeah. not easy by no. any means. Because yeah, people uh, buy the book to read and not to leave a review. Right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah that's the, I'm guilty yeah. of that. I mean, of all the books I read, I don't leave many reviews. I'm no. guilty of that. Yeah. I think it's <laughs> human, it's humanly normal. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. And then uh, you're reading it and then you forget about it, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Now, I always advise people uh, or to, yeah, with a lead magnet, then get them on the email list like you. And then um, in the email, remind them a few times at the end after the yeah. story in the email link. Okay, if you like the book, you can leave a review here. And then, like you said, direct link. So they only have to... Select the stars and write the text yeah. and submit. That's it. I mean, the the email list is always going to be beneficial in pretty much any type of market or niche. Yeah. Um, maybe I mean, if somebody if somebody publishes notebooks, for example, those low low or zero content books, that's probably not going to be a good idea because nobody no. will sign up for an email list. But no. even <laughs> if somebody is publishing books with a pen name you know, in a market that's not, you know, they don't want to be associated with that market. That's even going to be beneficial even then, because you need to think again, the long term, because the rev- the email subscribers are going to help you with the launch of the next book. They're going to help you yeah. with the reviews of the next book. So 
I mean, it doesn't have to be a full-time job maintaining an email list. You can send, you know, one email every two weeks and that's it. But mm -hmm. you need to be collecting those emails because they're going yeah, to be beneficial. I agree. Yeah, totally agree with you. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I'm curious how people mm -hmm. can um, use your service if they are interested. Before we go to the questions, all the people in chat, please hold your questions on a little bit. We go to the questions later. And yeah. we have two really exciting announcements. So stay on here because I'm going to share two exciting things. Yes. But so, uh, yeah, maybe you can share, your, if you want, you can share your screen. Yes. So essentially what you'll see here, let me just share my screen. Yes. Is... Um, a lot of tabs open. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, so I can see your this, screen. Yeah, this is our this is our website. Um, when you click on get quote, you yeah, will be taken to a. So uh, sorry, I, I don't know if people had the chance to see the website. Sorry. Book. Bookads.co. Oh yeah, bookads.co. Cool. And then you click on get and a then quote now. there's there's buttons everywhere to get quotes and the reason behind yeah. that is we take you through a questionnaire because we can't help everyone and so yeah. we want to understand what your goals are we want to understand what your situation is because again we can be like we can't forecast and we can make predictions that no. are 100 percent correct every time but no. we know at this point where, you know, somebody might be a good fit for ads or the book might be at the good point where they can start ads rather yeah. than, than somebody else. So what, what you have to do is essentially, essentially fill in this form and I yeah. it. And so select the type of ads that you're interested in, yeah. um, you know, author central and the link to your book, obviously, because we can yeah. see how many books have you published. Do you yeah. have ads running? You know, a few few questions, but the important one is the next one, this one. Um, our prices, why don't we have a price on, on our website and why can't you just click on buy now? Um, yeah. The reason behind that is on the one hand, because well, what I just said, we want to be screening people because... We don't want them to, um, you know, to submit a book that we don't feel like we're ready to advertise. Yeah. And at the same time, we actually try to sort of meet you halfway because our prices are not cheap. But at the same mm -hmm. time, we understand the situation and we try to be, you know, to, to give you the best deal that we can, both of us and for you. And so that's, it doesn't feel like a huge burden for you as an author and, it's okay for us in terms of, of the work we do. So um, that, that's the only reason why. So the yeah, reason why I, I was pointing to this last question is because if you mention, um, if you mention Juan or your other, your other group on Facebook or yeah, anything yeah. you want. If you mention my name, Juan Boren or Digital Freedom by JB or European self Publishers, yeah. Exactly. Then we'll know that, uh, that you've come from maybe this, this live session cool yeah and i will add a bonus to you guys a bonus with all the promotion sites i used in the past both the free promotions as the paid promotions and as brian indicated he always adv uh, advises people to use all the possible promotions that are also the promotional sites yes. right do you also have a personal list of promotion sites you can share with the people once they join your um i do yeah your program yeah, cool. cool. Of course. Yeah. 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 And um, the criteria uh, for people who are now in nonfiction or watching this and they think they have, I have 10 books. Um, are you going to promote every book? How yeah. does it work for them? So essentially, it's, it's not very common that we promote every book uh, right from the get go. Unless they are very different in, you know, the essentially standalones, like one is about the color blue, the other one is about the color yellow. But if unless they're very, very different, we always try to look at the situation in terms of yeah. where do people get into this, to this type of, you know, account when they are yeah. readers. So, for example, 
you know, usually for fiction, it's book one in a series. For nonfiction, might be, yeah, I don't know, the fundamentals of blah, 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 or uh, blah, 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 101. If we see that a lot of people are getting into this person's ecosystem from there, then we usually mm-hmm. optimize the ads for, for that book because that's okay, going yeah. to be the entry point. Yeah. Again, if people have got many books, we try and we think it's a good idea. We try to to do a bit of a bit of campaigns for everyone. Um, yeah. But I think in like, most cases you want to focus on the on the yeah two or three best books. Yeah, yeah, definitely and then the best the ones. ones. Yeah, yeah, the best ones that are that are converting best without the ads. Going back to what we said before, but yeah. also. Um, you know, it changes in time because it might be at this moment that you want to focus on this book. You might want to focus on another one at another time. And, uh, you know, yeah. that's that's usually what, what our approach is. And also a bit, like I said, in the beginning of the call, we tend to go for a much more, um, for a much leaner method now than we used to mm-hmm. in the past. Yeah, we would be looking at you know tens upon tens of campaigns, even like two years ago. Now mm-hmm. we want to do maybe five, <laughs> and make yeah. them you know really work well, rather than than doing a hundred yeah. and have them you know only have two working essentially. Yeah, and that's, so that's the, the reason. Is focus, focus. Yeah, always wins over. I mean, it's um, it's uh, it's a bit discouraging sometimes because you don't see a lot of movement until you you raise the bids and things like that. But if you think about running a campaign with a thousand keywords, even then they're only going to be like five or 10 keywords that are getting impressions. You'll be left with 900 that aren't doing anything. So why do it anyways, where you can essentially funnel all the budget and all the impressions onto those keywords. And if they don't work, then okay, you try new ones essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, so maybe you can show your site, book ads. Yeah. Dot co again. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, the other other big thing is you are going to organize an event, right? Yes, Very we're soon. going to organize an event. Um, it's called Fiction Marketing Academy. Um, okay. I won't show you yet because it's not it's not uh, ready yet. So like this, the, okay, no problem. No, that's, uh, uh, yeah. It's not live yet the homepage, but it will be in the next couple of days so yeah great fiction marketing academy now this is specifically for fiction in its essence (laughs) but there are more than one talks in there that are perfectly applicable to non-fiction as well um the talks are absolutely free um there's interviews and there's also presentations we got more than 40, 40 sessions uh, wow. that are all going to be for the first time free to watch forever. Um, the virtual event, you know, format is usually watch them for the first 24 hours and then upgrade. So mm-hmm. we are trying to change that a little bit and they're going to be on YouTube for good. Um, nice. There will be an upgrade, obviously, if some people want to, but it, they won't yeah. be locked. You know, the talks won't be locked. Um, I'm thinking about specifically, there are a few very interesting things about AI, which is a big topic. Um, it's a big topic at the moment. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I was talking about it. Yeah. Exactly. Cover design. Uh, you know, there's quite a few that are that are good for nonfiction as well. And the good thing is if you sign up and you, you know, you will get the, the calendar, the sessions, and you can just simply bookmark the ones that you want to attend and and then go to those and also you can watch them anytime on youtube so okay yeah so they and they are free they're free yeah wow wow yeah that's yes. cool so uh, you can I hope we don't them. we don't break any server because there's going to be hopefully a lot of people joining <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> yeah let me go okay guys um yeah, do I don't know if the guys in the chat have any questions. I will wait a little bit for people to... Uh, are you curious? Are you running ads yourself in the chat? Do you use Amazon ads or do you guys use other ads? Robbie, Natalia.
no questions so far. Let me see if I have some other questions maybe for you. Um, yeah, I think um, we covered that. Eh? Where do you promote your client's book? We covered that. Uh, Amazon ads is just personal specialty. You use BookPub and you also have uh, Facebook for if people are interested in that. So that's really uh, something new. Um, with your maybe, Brian, you can show some results from nonfiction people you helped in the past. Yeah. Yeah. So... If people have any questions in the chat, please ask them. Let me just, while you're getting ready for questions, I'm going to try and pull up something. Yeah. Um, so, how do I? So these are obviously, you know, because of the the nature of my of my job, <laughs> I can't really show you names or types of books. Of course, but that's normal. I yeah. I pulled a few screenshots that I had in a pre in a very recent presentation I did. Um, cool. They were mainly to address the fact, dress dress a few. Um, you know, do a bit of myth busting on things that people think about Amazon ads that are don't necessarily not true. So this one, for example, was I don't have enough time. And in this mm -hmm. in this situation, this is a nonfiction client. Um, I was I was showing them that the amount of time that goes into managing this over a one month period is uh is not much at all but again this is was just to show to make that point i have another one um here that is always about non-fiction and it was supposed to yeah. address the question they don't work in my genre this um author here i try to blur as <laughs> as little as possible but this book was about grief <laughs> is about okay grief. Um, yeah. And you can see the, you know, the results here. My, I mean, wow. these are quite recent. Yeah. Um, you know, the spend and the sales and and things like that. Of course, yeah, yeah. This is this is a book that was published in 2017. So yeah, long means, time ago. It's a long time ago, yeah. And so, but it does the, have some decent reviews, I see. Yes, exactly. And yeah. these these have been the byproduct of, of sales essentially. So he didn't start yeah. with with a thousand reviews, obviously. No, 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 even no. If, the even if you sales, had a huge yeah. even if you had like a huge launch team, <laughs> getting to a thousand yeah. reviews is not is not easy. Um no. and this one is is another one uh, that was addressing the problem of I don't have enough budget. Um this is another client and this is a is a bit of a um, slower scale and, and smaller scale. And it was in the month of January, this was to make a okay. point of these ads are not easy. They, they don't like spending money too much. So in most okay, cases, yeah. it's not like Facebook that if you say $50, it's going to be $50 no matter what. Um, yeah. This spend of $87 in a month was... So it was from the 1st of January, yeah, to one month was equal to around $2.81 a day, which is yeah. very manageable. Um, yeah. I Again, I recommend going a little bit higher because it kind mm -hmm. of uh, it kind of signals to Amazon that, that there's, there's willingness to spend. But I mean, it can be done in, uh, with, a, with a much lower budget, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Brian, I got one question, and then you can continue your sure. presentation there. Natalie. Um, Natalie, I don't run ads for my books, and two of them are selling organically. If I start ads and then decide to turn them off, will I kill my organic sales? Will Amazon punish me this way because they want me to pay to play? <laughs> Very good question, Natalie. Thank you. Yes, very good question. Um, I've seen both things um, happen. I mm -hmm. won't lie. Um, and in a couple cases, I did think Amazon is is punishing this person. 
However, okay. I am not entirely sure. And I did write to them, but of course I wasn't expecting a clear answer from them. They'll never no. say that. Um, <laughs> the majority of cases have not been like this. So yes, mm. turn them off, but then turn them back on. And essentially you get better than you were before, but they still get yeah. the, the organic visibility that you were before yeah. the ads. The yeah. only thing is, the only thing here is be very careful to never put an end date with, you know, to never put an end date to the ad because once you put an end date, the ad ends. <laughs> and so it's not possible to turn it on again. If you yeah. pause it, then you can restart it. And that means the ad remembers all the sales and the data it has collected throughout the period when it was live. If you yeah. end it, you're starting from scratch. So always remember to, um, to never put an end date Again, in terms of yeah. statistics, I've seen this happen and I've seen it happen less times than I've seen it be not the yeah. case. But yeah, what's your opinion? I'm curious about it because if uh, books are selling organically right now without running any ad, what are the chances, chances that an ad won't be profitable? I think they're way lower, right? Yes. And also I think... In, if they do hurt you, like if they mm -hmm. do punish you, it will come after you've been running, running ads for a while. If you just start them and then you you think, um, no, maybe not, and you stop them after you know, three days, they, it's not yeah. even going to you know, make a dent in anything. <laughs> yeah, um, no. anything. That yeah. being said, if you have a book that is selling organically, you start the ads and you see that the ads are going well, it's unlikely that you like that you want to <laughs> to stop them stop because no, yeah, if no. they go well, why not? Yeah, you see, there's another I question. Think, yeah, I always needed the ads to really boost my sales, but I never yeah had any experience that a book was selling organically, and then I would turn on ads, and then it would hurt my organic sales. I don't have any experience. It only helps yeah, it because the organic yeah. sales because your BSR. Uh, you're going to be higher in the Amazon ranking, bestseller ranking, and you get also more organic sales just by running ads. And the ads itself probably don't yeah, the, because your book already sells. Yeah, yeah, that's my experience as well. Like I said, it it did happen a couple of times, but I'm you know I'm sort of trend trending towards the idea that there might have been something else happening as well. Yeah. Because it sort of coincided with the ad stopping and the organic sales stopping as well, so not not so uh, not so convinced. No, no, me neither. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, Natalie, thank for the question. There's spent another question. Is, yeah. Yeah, the spend is without extra twenty percent in tax. Um, well, Natalie, that depends on how you have set up your KDP publishing business. Eh? Do you have an LLC in the US, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. But there are many cases about this. We can talk about this um, after our call. I don't think this is really a question for Brian to well, address. The 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 A cost number that um, that you see the last um, the last example I showed. I'm gonna share my screen again. Mm -hmm. So the sales here are gross sales, but. If I'm looking at the ACOS, I know that this person is making quite good yeah, money profit. because of, you know, the um, the royalty the royalty that I'm taking into account in the ACOS. Um, yeah. Again, I'm not I'm not saying look at the ACOS as as the the gospel by any means, uh, mm -hmm. but in this in this situation is uh, yeah. is it's fine. But and also, like I said, this is a smaller scale. But if you look at the ads, if you look at any ads dashboard, this number mm -hmm. is going to be gross, not net. Yeah, so not, not, not net, net. exactly. Still uh, always gross. Yeah, in my and experience, all... you have to aim for an A cost below 40% to be yeah. profitable. And also, if you are in Kindle Unlimited, this will not show the page reads. So okay. This person might have another sixty dollars, I don't know, in page reads, and it won't show on here. It will show yeah. down here in the in the columns, and it's an estimate, yeah. but it's not going to show in in the sales. So this is never the last the last word. You need to compare it to your 
KDP royalty report. To, to the actual yeah. KDP royalty, totally yeah. agree. Yeah, because sometimes even I got sales that didn't show up in KDP only a few days after. And sometimes I got already um, KDP royalties without seeing anything here. So it's not always, yeah, I yeah. always look at the KDP dashboard. I think that's the most reliable. Yeah. And, and calculate it, your own sales. Yeah. Especially, especially with um, paperbacks. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the official Amazon guidelines say it can take them up to 14 days to show a paperback sale. Wow. So, yeah. you know, I might have I might have sold a book 13 days ago and, and I might know now from the yeah. ads, obviously. This is another reason why, like you said, it's it's important to look at the KDP, the KDP reports, but also look at the ads and don't like I've had, especially when I was starting out. I've had a few cases where I would stop a campaign and then I would go in after three days and I saw it was profitable, profitable. So I said, well, well why did I, why did I do this? And that's because <laughs> the sales catch up a little catch bit later. later. And Sometimes so, you have some yeah. legs. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's another reason why you shouldn't terminate an ad because at that point I can turn it back on. If it's got an end date, I'm starting from scratch. Okay, so your advice is to always have an open end date and then pause it. Always pause it, yeah. It's yeah. gonna be the same as 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 stopping it, stopping but it. it's not stopping it. <laughs> yeah, you can always easily turn it on again when it in 30 years later results profitable. Yeah, clear, clear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Natalie, I hope we answered your questions. Let me know in the chat. And now we can uh, maybe uh, address Robbie's question. Robbie. Brian, would you suggest SEO strategies to sell your books organically? SEO on Amazon or SEO on, on you know, general books. SEO? Google? Yeah, I don't know what Brian refers to as Let's see SEO. If Ro in general. In general. Okay, so general. Yeah, um, it's going to be obviously long, long term game because. If it's in general, you've got you know the 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 website authority, you've got everything. If you're talking about like publishing ca content on your blog about the books and ranking for keywords that are the same ones that you're targeting, um, in terms of Amazon listings showing up on Google as res search results. It's not very frequent because Google prioritizes, for example, YouTube, because obviously YouTube is Google. And so yeah. Amazon is a little bit, I mean, unless you've got a very, very relevant book that is the number one resource on that specific keyword, then yes. Yeah. Um, in terms of general SEO, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry more about the SEO on Amazon um, which is going to always be beneficial because it's going to bring you organic sales and the organic sale, it's a chain and the organic sales are going to improve their ranking and the ranking is going to give uh, a boost to the ads. So I yeah. would definitely focus more on Amazon SEO rather than general SEO. Yeah. I totally agree with you, Ryan. Yeah. Focus on Amazon because there's people are going to Amazon with the buying intention you know, Google, they just want to have information. So yeah. Amazon, yeah, I think in every course I took, always focus on Amazon. Yeah, and it's I also, think, the, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of how warm the customer is because if they are on Amazon, they're looking for something to buy, specifically a book. And like you said, on, on Google, they might be looking just for information. And so you need to look at that as well. And that's also <laughs> why Facebook ads, sometimes are not very effective because people are on Facebook for all kinds of things. And so <laughs> rather yeah. than, uh, rather than buying books. And so they that's, rather that's buy a book. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Amazon ads are way more in general, more yeah, effective. More yeah. targeted. Yeah. Yeah. More targeted. Yeah. But Robbie, I think uh, joined a little bit later and in the beginning, Brian, you said about, uh, yeah, boosting your book. Um, yeah, through promotion sites, paid or free, uh, joining other podcasts, doing podcast interviews, joining, yeah. I don't know, influencers. That does help um, get your book ranked and then it will help your ads in the second place as well, right? Yeah, you always need to do your part of the job and then the ads will benefit. And obviously the ads will be a big part at some point 
of your total income, but you always need to do, you can't leave the ads running alone and not do anything on your end to, to publish, to promote the book. Is yeah. this, does this mean that Amazon is pay to play? Not yet completely, but it's definitely better if you run ads, obviously yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's obviously yeah. beneficial. Yeah. Cool. Robbie, did this answer your question? Let me see if I, uh, yep, cool, cool. If I have any questions. Um... Yeah, I think we answered a lot of questions on how about to market your book, how to promote your book. Um... Oh, well, I yeah, think I you meant 40, four zero, I think. You meant. Four zero, yeah, 40. So I was, uh, sorry for my... Um pronunciation, which is a little bit with a Dutch accent. <laughs> 40, yeah, 4 zero. Yeah, it depends so, on every book. So you need to calculate depends the, the book. Yeah, uh, I'm talking calculate. more about nonfiction, where the majority of the sales come from mm. paperbacks. Um, if it's Kindle, then it's all a ACOS game. Yeah. yeah. Okay, oh, now I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to hear. Yeah, cool. Okay, yeah, I think we uh, covered a lot. I think, thank you very much, Brian, for sharing all those that wisdom of years and years of Amazon My pleasure. ads. I learned a lot as well. Um, uh, do you guys have any last questions? Maybe you can do a last promotion for your... Um, yes, pitch. by all means, by all means, come and, and see us at Fiction Marketing Academy. The link, well, the name of the event yeah. is uh, is further up in the chat. Um, yeah. Site is going to be up and running in a couple of days. I will um, put a link in my, to my email list. I would yeah. put a link in my Facebook group so everyone can... Um, we will be doing a few live talks during the event. So if you want to join us there, it's going to be like open Q&A. So we always get nonfiction writers as well. So Yeah. Yeah. And do you already have some sessions in mind, which might be extra interesting for nonfiction? Yeah, I was, I was trying to think about them, but let me just check live for you. Yeah. Take your time. Yeah. I think you mentioned, for example, the, about the book offer. Uh, it can yeah. be interesting maybe for nonfiction. Yeah. So um, I've got a session on advanced readers launch teams which is by yeah. somebody who focuses on nonfiction mainly. So that's... that's wow, all. that's um, interesting, yeah. Uh, minimalist marketing. So an approach like the 80-20 approach, which is more or less my approach. Um, yeah. AI. The author here is, is doing fiction, but he's very knowledgeable about AI in general. So... Mm um then and did you can you give us a little bit about the secret he's talking about already to uh spark some curiosity with ai yeah the ai is essentially the thing that he's come up with is he calls it story hacking and it's essentially a little bit like spying on your competitors but you know in an ethical way obviously and it's, it's yeah it's basically trying to see what your competitors did right via AI so that you can mm. hopefully replicate the same thing. Um, yeah. We've got uh, branding, but that's more for fiction. Well, I think, uh, uh, yeah, for I mean, non fiction, the... real non fiction, successful non fiction publishers do branding. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, time management, um, going That's wide might be interesting, you know, not yeah. just publishing on Amazon. Um, a bit a bit more common with fiction, but it, it's also yeah. possible in nonfiction. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, this is good, which, um, which we talked about. This is going to be about fiction, but it's very applicable to nonfiction, and it's mm -hmm. pitching people um for promotion so getting a you know being a guest on a podcast being a guest on the blog so how to pitch your work to other people without feeling you know a bit scared and 
Ja, yeah. out of come your, uh, your fears. Yes. And to get your word out of there without being salesy, something like that. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, how to create a book marketing plan is both fiction and non-fiction. How nice. to build a, a rejection-proof author platform, which is also applicable to non-fiction. And also uh, there's one about not being too focused on social media, which is kind of my my preference when it comes to promotion, that is. Okay. Um, but also another thing that I should have said before is the, you know, joining the event will give you discounts to all kinds of things. So it might be okay. beneficial to, to have to have a look around because it's free because yeah. we've, got, we've yeah. got a partnership with Fiverr. And there's a few people who work on Fiverr that are good Fiverr people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. They're not all bad, no. <laughs> exactly. And then, no. you know, a few few things here and there. But um, Nice, yeah, lots, nice. Lots, lots and what stuff. are the exact dates for the event? Yeah, the event is going to be from the 9th of October until the 15th. October. Until the 15th, so... One week. It's really a big event you're organizing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Impressive. It's, it's, it's um last year was seven thousand attendees. Seven thousand, uh, wow. Yeah, this yeah. year we are hoping to get to ten, hopefully, but we don't yeah. know. So no. we'll see, we'll see. Depends, <laughs> depends, of course. Yeah, but that's a really uh, cool uh, cool number. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, well done. Thanks. Yeah. I'll uh, I hope to see you all there in one of the chats. Yeah, I uh, I will certainly join. You already said some sessions. I thought okay. I, uh, because I had the stupid plan of not stupid, but I regretted to write my own book, a non-fiction book about my experience on how I scaled from zero of from eight euros to eleven thousand twenty-seven dollars in twelve months. I thought, well, I should share my story and the uh, and all the tactics and strategies I used. And I thought. Uh, yeah, I have to go out maybe to a podcast or to other things yeah. where my book is almost ready. So I'm definitely going to join your event, Brian. So uh, thank you for that. And thank you a lot for sharing all this valuable information. I myself learned a lot. Um, and not that I know everything, but I did. I do have some experience, of course, with ads and with all kinds of tests. So uh, I really, yeah, it was really interesting for me. Do you Ooh. guys have any last questions? I don't think so. Do you have any closing words maybe for us, Brian? Yeah, I mean, in terms of um, in terms of advertising, paid advertising, I always recommend try at least try doing a couple of campaigns. Um, first of all, because it's something that I think you will come to, <laughs> you will have to encounter or you will have to use at some point or the other. Because the this, the philosophy behind these ads is always the same on BookBub, on Facebook, on Amazon, on Quora, on LinkedIn, anywhere. So if you can sort of have a, a grasp of what's what's going on is always good. Yeah. Um, and if you can afford it and if you want, is always have at least one automatic campaign going in the background. Mm. Um, at least with two dollars a day, maybe, or even I mean, one is going to be not much, but let's say two dollars a day, which is going to be, um, you know, not months. much at all, yeah. yeah, not much, not much at all. But what you will do is you will have something running and the algorithm is learning, and so when the day will come that you want to ramp up your advertising, then you will benefit from all the data that has come before essentially oh that's a good good tip yeah yeah thank you well again exactly. thank you very much brian and Thanks. for all the people who joined today or watching the recording please go to brian's website bookads.co fill in the quotes don't forget to uh, say you come from me and then send me an email uh, and i will give you an extra bonus with all kinds of promotional sites both free and paid so um yeah, really. Thank you, Brian, again. Thank you, Hi, guys. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And, um, Brian, we keep in touch. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye.